All right. So in three, two. Good afternoon. My name is Rod McVeigh, and I'm chairman of the Audit Committee. I now call to order the June 20th, 2023 meeting of the Audit Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee, at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison, may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's audit committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by roll call vote. Board members will say their name before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. As a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Jamison or Ms. Barr if you must leave the call by using the team chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Lichter. Here, present. Ms. Frempong. Mr. Young. Present. And Mr. McMillian. Present. Thank you. A quorum being present, we will begin. Ms. Jamison, please. Jamison, I'm sorry. I, that just clicked in me. Please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Barr. Present. Ms. Stevens. Present. Ms. Manna. Present. Mr. Fletcher. Present. Mr. Street. Present. Ms. Sample. Here. Ms. Crew. Present. Mr. Edwards. Present. Ms. Smith. Present. Mr. Hartlove. Present. Mr. Corns. Present. Dr. Agosto. Ms. Simons. Present. Ms. Lear. Present. Mr. Stovenauer. Present. Mr. Kumajan. Present. Are there any other attendees present that I did not recognize? Hearing no additional names, I turn the meeting back to you, Mr. McMillian. Thank you, Ms. Jamison. Good afternoon. If committee members, this is item two, opening remarks. If committee members have questions that are outside the scope of the report, which sometimes I do myself, presented this afternoon, please email Ms. Barr or me with your questions. We will follow up with appropriate individuals to get the answers to your questions. Item number three, approval of minutes. The live video footage of our last meeting represents the minutes of the meeting. The minutes stand approved as recorded. Item number four, reports. Ms. Crew and Mr. Fletcher, please proceed with the FY23 maintenance of student data audit report. Mr. Corns, can you pull that up, please? Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Mr. Corns. Um, would you mind starting on the highlighted page, please? Thank you. Um, we completed the maintenance of student data audit and issued the report on June 8th of 2023. The report can be found on board docs for this meeting and it is posted to the internal audit website. The objective of the audit was to determine that student data is properly maintained, stored, and in internally and externally reported. Internal audit reviewed fiscal year 2022 and 2023 and identified no reportable issues. It was determined that student data is properly maintained, stored, and internally and externally reported. Mr. Corns, can you move to page one? A little further down, please. Thank you. Okay. First, we would like to thank Mr. Corns and the Division of Information Technology for their prompt submission of audit request and detailed explanations provided when follow up was requested. Next, we would like to talk about the four commendations we've noted in the report. The first commendation is related to application maintenance. Our review indicated the vendors provided reports to include data security and encryption information, as well as provided their disaster recovery plans that included backup requirements. 
The next commendation is related to student data transfer. Our review indicated the vendors provided reports that include student data encryption specification requirements during transfer, as well as included access and authentication controls implemented on the transfer of student data. In addition, the accuracy of the student data transmitted between the systems is validated by the end user. Our third commendation is related to student service application support. Our review of the help desk tickets related to FOCUS, Schoology, and SPS indicated that student application users are provided with timely responses. The last commendation is related to reporting. Our review indicated that the process, a process exists to verify the accuracy of the data reported from the student service applications. Mr. Corns, could you please turn, move to page two? Thank you. This audit received a satisfactory rating since the controls are operating in a satisfactory manner and provide some level of assurance. The risks were effectively managed and there were no issues identified. Once again, we want to thank Mr. Corns and his staff for their cooperation during this audit. This concludes our presentation for this audit. Mr. McMillian, I turn it back to you for any questions. Thank you very much. Committee members, are there any discussion on this item? Here appears to be no questions, so we're going to move on. Ms. Mr. Strait and Ms. Mana, please proceed with FY23 MSDE Certifications and Maintenance Audit Report. All right, Mr. Corns, could you bring up that report, please? And I will start off at the, the summary highlights page as well. All right, so this, this audit uh, was for the, um, the period of fiscal year 2023, and I'm gonna start off with um, explaining what our objectives were and then move into our accommodations and then um, go into the detailed uh, issues that we uh, reported on. Our objective was to ensure that the monitoring and maintenance of the certificated employees complied with MSDE, uh, Code of Maryland, and the internal HR policies um, of BCPS. Um, I like to do a little background on, on that process. Um, the, the main system that is used for that monitoring and for the for the ability of teachers to provide their credentials is the MSDE teach system. I would like to stress that that is not a BCPS system. Um, it is a, a MSDE system. However, uh, the Office of Certification staff are liaisons between MSDE and our certificated staff. In addition, the uh, the Office of Certification staff get specialized training to have the ability to uh, approve the certification status of certificated employees. Only those uh, employees within the Office of Certification that have the so-called CAP training from MSDE are allowed to make those determinations. And employees are, are at the um, can only receive that training when MSDE provides it. Um, so we are at the will of whenever that is that training is provided. Our other objective was to ensure that the employee growth chart exists and that the certificated employee is paid accurately based on that growth chart and the coursework within the human resources information system. Now the growth chart is a listing of courses completed by the educator that includes a course name, the location, the credits earned, uh, and what their current salary lane is. Um, certificated employees do have the ability to look at their growth chart live through the employee service uh, portal, which is um, accessible via their BCPS login. Uh, Mr. Corns, could you move to page four, the accommodations? Um, page, page six of the PDF, but uh, page four. Yes, perfect. Uh, we have two accommodations. I wanted to highlight that during the process of the audit that um, uh, Ms. Simmons and her staff uh, communicate 
very well with with uh, certificate em employees uh, throughout the process. I actually was given access to the Schoology groups that the Office of Certification maintains, and I can tell you that very often um, communications do come out from her or her staff. In addition, on that Schoology uh, page, there are resource tabs that are always there that have forms. Uh, very specific directions on the process that edu uh, educators can use to to maintain their certification for renewal or for the initial process once they're onboarded. So that that Schoology uh, group is well maintained and has a lot of good information for the educators. In addition, the salary review that we performed over the growth charts uh, with coursework, we verified that the certificate employee is paid accurately based on the credentials that are in the Advantage HR system for certificate employee educators. We uh, we did not. I want to stress that we did not test the certificate employees growth chart chart rec reconciliation, which is a different process where empl uh, certificate employees can submit additional coursework through a portal that uh, we maintain and uh, and um, update their salary lane. We did not test that process. We tested that the information that's within the HR system accurately depicts what the employee is currently getting paid. Mr. Corns, if you could move to the first page of the of the issues. Thank you. So I would like to start off by saying that uh, this audit received a satisfactory rating, which is the best rating our audits can have. Um, although there were issues, the, the risk level related to these issues is, is low, which, which allowed us to still maintain the status of satisfactory. Uh, the first issue is related to an internal BCPS SOP. This is not related to anything related for MSDE requirements or uh, COMAR. Uh, the finding is that the projected certification letter and the certification evaluation for certificated employees hired with a conditional certificate were not issued in accordance with the SOP, and that's that's the name of the SOP. It is not a it's not an MSDE requirement. That's just the name of our internal SOP. And we found that 16 newly hired conditional employees within our sample did not receive their certification letter or their evaluation within 60 days. And that 60 day mark again is an internal BCPS policy. It is not an MSDE requirement. And we um, we provided a recommendation that the manager of the Office of Certification should ensure the evaluations and projected certificate letters are issued to conditionally certificated employees in accordance with this SOP. Um, the other issue we found was that uh, it's related to the Human Resources Information System and that the Office of Certification does do a lot of manual processes for the tracking of MSDE teaching certificate statuses for the certificated uh, educators and that um, staff within the Office of Certification must download documents and individually email them to certificated employees. So there is a lot of a lot of steps in the process that we think could be uh, combined if if there was an HR system that uh, allowed for direct communication to employees without having to individually do each employee uh, file. And we recommended that the manager of the Office of Certification communicate the needs of her office to the implementation team of a newly selected system when that process takes place. And now I would like to open it up to Ms. Simmons to discuss her management corrective action for these two issues. My apologies, didn't realize my camera was off. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, I'll take uh, the first issue and then go to the second. Um, so regarding the first issue, um, as uh, Alex shared, we do hire a high number of conditional teachers. Um, and in his report or in the report, it states that there has been an 81% increase um, from the year prior to this year that is concluding um, of conditional teachers. So, of course, that has caused our team um, to um, 
be delayed with issuing cert certificate evaluations and projected letters. Um, the need uh, to support our conditional teachers is much uh, greater than what the staffing here can provide or those staff members here who are trained to provide. Um, we remain on the list of training uh, when MSDE offers uh, the training. Um, we were hopeful that the training would start in this fall 2023, but due to the pending uh, new certification regulations, that has been um, delayed uh, until further notice. Um, however, we are pleased to share that uh, one of our members has participated in CAPA which is an associate level training. And at the time of reporting back to this audit, we were waiting um, a positive result that she has passed and she has passed that training. Um, so we have one additional resource where it will allow her to focus on APC renewals and our uh, certification authorized partners who have full authorization to issue MSCE certificates can focus on conditional teachers. Um, so given the rise of the um, need across the nation for teachers, that means we're hiring a lot more conditional teachers in this county across the state. Um, so we have to go back and evaluate our processes and procedures within that specific, specific SOP. Um, in the meantime, we provide information to our conditional teachers through Schoology. Um, it's also on our web page. We've trained our consultant teachers, our staff developer teachers, our resource teachers to provide support on the schoolhouse level so that our conditional teachers are able to obtain the information they need uh, sooner than later. Um, most times, uh, our conditional teachers are content experts and they need most of uh, the certification requirements. Um, so there is a place for them to start prior to receiving the evaluation from uh, the certification team. Um, new this year at the new educator orientation, our facilitators have been trained on certification. So if there's questions about conditional cert, then those teachers can go to those facilitators and get additional information from them as well. Um, so we are dedicated to revisiting our staffing, looking at how we can reassign resources so that we can get in front of our conditional teachers and support them directly. Um, I mentioned the new regs that are impending. Um, in the new regulations that are proposed, um, the need for um, course by course transcript analysis may not be necessary. That option towards certification um, will no longer be available and teachers will have to join a teacher preparation program, uh, which means the evaluation um, that my team needs to complete would gradually reduce. We're hoping to have this corrected within the next year um, or by July 1st, 2024. Issue two. Alex, if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, issue two. Uh, was uh, or is our office's ability to um, manage the work in more of an electronic process. Right now it is a very manual process. It's extremely manual. Um, and um, we did submit um, a, a request or requirements in the request for a new enterprise resource planning system, um, the need for a document management system, um, notifications, scheduled notifications through the system, and a reporting tool. Um, so this process is still underway, um, and um, we're hopeful that once a vendor is identified, we'll continue to work with them. Um, to streamline and automate the process. 
All right, that's uh, that's everything that I have for this report. I wanted to thank Carla and her team again for all the work that they do. And um, I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. McMillian, for any questions. Thank you. Committee members, any questions on this topic? Yes, uh, I have questions. Yes, please, Mr. Young. You mentioned in the report that um, in your sample 16, you called out the number 16 specifically, that there were issues with those. What was your total sample size? I would have to go back to the original work papers. We we did pull uh, different employee groups. We did renewals and we did conditionals. One of them was 60 and one of them was uh, a lesser number, but I can get that get that specific number back to you. Um, but we do not have that documented in the report, but uh, it one one sample was 60 and the other one was less than that. OK. My next question, um, and it may be outside of your scope, so if so, I'm sorry. Um, but in the background, you mentioned that like the Office of Staffing does a review of conditional employees, and then the Office of Certification turns around and also does um, their own review. So it, I guess my question is, isn't that kind of inefficient? Would you like to take that, Carla? Yes. Um, hi, Ms. Mr. Young. I hope yes. you the doctor. OK, <laughs> um, Mr. Young. Um, so when staffing is reviewing uh, applicants in determining if they qualify for a particular position, um, there are instances where um, they come to my office and we work with them to do a preliminary review. And it is also part of their job to go through each applicant and make sure are they a viable candidate to go into the pool. We don't want to move candidates forward who just aren't eligible. Um, so they do a, a, a small cursory review and then if needed, they come to us to do a deeper dive. They're trained. I specifically trained them to pick up on particular pieces to look for for certification. And then when a teacher is actually hired, my team is responsible for generating the evaluation and doing the official evaluation. So there's not a lot of overlap between what they actually do versus what your team does is tasked with doing. Co correct. It it's not a lot because we actually document what uh, the teacher, the new teacher, at that point needs to become certified. They're looking at, um, like I said, a preliminary view. What would they, could they go into the pool to be considered as a teacher? Okay. And my last question is for issue two. Um, it was marked as closed. I know you mentioned that there's, of course, an RFP and what you're looking for out of that. Um, is it premature to close the issue because we don't know if there's a vendor that's going to provide you everything that you're looking for? I, related I to this issue? That. I can take that, Mr. Young. So our recommendation was for uh, Ms. Simmons to voice what their needs are. So. In that aspect, she did she did meet our recommendation. Um, she can speak to how far down the down the line they are with making those decisions. Um, but but uh, as far as our recommendation, we wanted her voice to be heard, and that hopefully her office gets the the software that they need. I I can't speak to how exactly far along we are with the RFP process because that is it is outside of my purview. But um, when it was initiated, initiated, the requests that we need were presented. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any committee members? Any additional questions? There's a chat. Let me check the chat here. 
Uh, th that was Miss Mana. She confirmed that the sample um, size that Mr. Young asked about it was 60 employees. Okay, 16 thank out you. of 60. OK, thank okay, you. There appears to be no additional questions. Thank you very much for the report. We're going to move on. Uh, item number five. New business, Mr. Fletcher, please proceed with investigations update. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. And this is a report of our investigative statistics for the month of May 2023. This report is on board for this meeting and will also be posted to our website, um, the Office of Internal Audit website. And Mr. Corns, if you could, please take us to table one, which is on page two of the report. I believe it's page three of the PDF. Perfect. Yes, thank you. So in May, we received 28 cases into our office. Uh, table one summarizes those cases, which show that nine will be investigated by internal audit. One was referred to BCPS management for their review and investigation. And 18 will be closed with a memo to file as the information provided was not in the purview of the hotline. And so for the nine cases kept for investigation by internal audit, two are classified as payroll fraud, four are classified as misuse of resources, one is classified as theft, and the remaining two are classified as management issues. And Mr. Corns, if you would, take us to table two, which is on the next page. A little bit down more to the bottom. That's perfect. Perfect. Thanks so much. So here we note that in addition to the 28 new cases received in May, 23 cases were already open at the end of April. So there were 51 cases in total that were open at one point or another throughout the month of May. Now, in May, 22 cases were closed, resulting in 29 cases still open as of May 31st. And so four investigations conducted by our office, which are here in this first column, 22 were open throughout the month, and three were closed with one being inconclusive and two unsubstantiated. This resulted in 19 cases open at the end of the month, and details for those cases are on table three, which is below on page four. For the management investigations, which are here in the second column, six were open throughout the month and two were closed as unsubstantiated allegations. As a result, four remain open at the end of May and details for those cases are on table four, which is below on page five. And then finally, uh, for the cases outside the purview of the hotline, they are here in this final column, uh, 23 were open throughout the month and 17 were closed, resulting in six still open as of May 31st. And then details for those cases are available on table five, which is below on pages six and seven. And Mr. McMillian, I turn it back over to you for any questions. Okay, committee members, any questions? I don't see any questions. No questions, okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Fletcher. We're finished with that. Thank you. We move on to item six with announcements. The next meeting, the audit committee will be on Tuesday, September 19, 2023 at 4.30 p.m. Item seven, administrative function. I will now entertain a motion to convene an administrative function session to discuss the operations of the committee. Can I hear a motion, please? Motion. Yes, motion, Ms. Lichter. Ms. Lichter made the initial motion. I need a second. Second, Mr. Young. Mr. Young seconded. It has been properly moved and seconded that we convene an administrative function session to discuss these matters. Ms. Jambison, will you please call the roll? Ms. Lichter? Present. Ms. Frempong? Present. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Thank you. The next okay. item is approval.